Hey, what is up guys? Coles here bringing this new video. We have some new exciting arena news coming out from the Hearthstone Blizzard devs. So I just wanted to bring some of that information to you. Not too much has come out about the mini set as far as card reveals or anything, but there have been some news of the arena rotation. So that is going to be the first thing I'm gonna bring up right now. So we have confirmed that there will be an arena rotation when the mini set comes out. So the sets, it's going to be following the same kind of trend that it has been. It's going to be a mostly standard rotation. What they're doing is they're rotating out the old sets, which were Mean Streets of Gadget Sand and Rise of Shadows. And they're bringing in two new sets, which were older sets, which were Goblins vs. Gnomes and Kobolds and Catacombs. I'm going to talk a little about these sets. And of course, Whaling Caverns as well, the new mini set will of course be coming in as well. So I'm not going to talk too much. If I'm, I'll link to my older video where I talked about the cards rotating in so you can see the the relevant cards in the Ministry of God, Sand and Rise of Shadows that were rotating out. But I will talk some about the the new cards coming in, Goblins vs. Gnome and Kobolds vs. Catacombs. So this is Kobolds vs. Catacombs. Honestly, this set was not an, a super strong set, so I'm going to scroll down the list here and just kind of point out any cards that seem like super relevant. There are some playable cards, but not much here. Flanking Strike's pretty good. Cannon Shot's okay. Crushing Wall's a card you're going to want to think about. That card's going to be back. So positioning based card to be, keep in mind. Um, here, not too much as far as Mage. Mage gets another AoE. Explosive Loon's another secret. Raven's a card, but not too much here. Paladin is getting... Uh, actually, I'm thinking about the other set. Not too much here. Unidentified Maul. Not too much else that's really playable, to be honest. Called Arms might be okay. Push and Heroism is a thing, but not super meta defining. Uh, looking at here, uh, Priest getting Dusk Breaker, another big AoE. They're also getting Psychic Scream, so Priest is getting a lot. Priest is losing a lot too. Gal they particularly were losing a lot in Mean Streets of Gadget Sand, but they are gaining a lot of the AoE back. So that's going to be super relevant. Um, Rogue getting some decent cards here. Rogue has, this is a really hard thing to actually trigger, but potentially Rogue can have like this kind of mass clear. It's like, this is like a really bad version of, you know, the Warlock card that's just four mana and does the same thing with a much easier upgrade. But you know, it's a thing to think about. They are getting a couple new, uh, several new secrets as well. So Rogue's gonna have a million secrets all of a sudden actually. That'll be a bit interesting. Um, Shaman, most significant card here is probably Unstable Evolution. It's an epic, so you won't see it drafted too often, but off of a Discover, you will probably see this pretty often. Um, other than that, not too much you're going to see a lot of here. Crushing Hand, you might see occasionally. Uh, Warlock getting a couple good tempo minions here between the Librarian and the Homunculus. Other than that, uh, Spellstone's an okay card. Can be a nice source of healing, potentially, but... Void Lord's going to be there, but otherwise not much use you're going to see in the arena too often. Um, Warrior, really not getting much here. And some neutrals. It's funny when I look at these old sets, because like whenever I see like a lot of the neutrals, like Lone Champion's like, well, this is core set now. <laughs> so this one isn't even coming back. Same story with Basilisk, right? But one significant one that will be coming back is the Dragon Slayer, so that'll be something to keep in mind. Uh, Void Ripper is an interesting card. Um, otherwise, really not too much that's going to be super relevant. Now, I guess Fungal Mancer is going to be a pretty... That's a card that you're going to be thinking about as well. Obviously, generally, especially if the meta is similar, if it's a tempo meta, you know, you're just going to be playing around Fungal Mancer naturally anyway, but, you know, good to know it exists. Uh, Violet Worm, the OG version of Plague Proto Drake coming back as well. And, yeah, not too much else here. And now the other set rotating in is Goblins vs. Gnomes. Um, I'm looking at the neutrals right here, but um, for Druid, this was like a, this set was in like, I forget, either late 2014 or 2015. So this was before a lot of power creep. So really there's some decent cards here, playable cards, but I'm going to scroll through these a little bit faster probably because they're not a lot of cards that by modern standards are going to be super, super playable. Glaive Duke is probably still going to be decent. Sniper even. It's okay. Flame Cannon coming back. Snow Chugger as well. Some decent cards. There are going to be some mech synergies here. You know, with the Goblin Blast Mage. Um, 
Paladin getting some really significant cards though. This was one, this Paladin set at the time and even for years afterwards was probably one of the strongest sets any class has gotten is between Shield and Minibot. At the time, this was mind blowing. It's still obviously good, but it was mind numbingly good at the time. Cog Hammer, very significant kind of win harder cards to an extent. Must have rebelled the ultimate like win card to get ahead. I suppose the other one, this is really good when you're ahead. Must for Bow was the way that you got ahead. So when you had both, it was uh, totally fair and reasonable at the time. Priest getting some pretty good cards here. Just a lot of good, like, a lot of good, like, two drops here. Shadow Boxers, two drop with upside, two drop with upside. Bellin's Chosen, one of the better, even, even now, still a pretty decent buff card. And, um... Yeah, as I mentioned, they're getting Psychic Scream in the other set. They're also getting Light Bomb in this set. So, very good cards. Or very good AoE cards that Priest is getting. So, Priest is actually gaining, I think, more AoE than they're losing. So, that will be that will be interesting. Uh, Rogue, not getting super strong cards here. Sabotage is alright. Uh, Tank Oral is pretty... <laughs> we have, like, the two-mana version, which was the one-mana version, but then the two-mana version of the same card. It's gonna be feel quite slow. It always felt slow, but it's gonna feel extremely slow now. Ooh, Crackle, the ultimate RNG card. <laughs> and so, some decent Shaman cards here. Uh, Warlock, uh, Implosion's coming back. Another really big RNG card. Um, but otherwise, I mean, Dark Bomb being back is gonna be interesting. Otherwise, I mean, not super significant stuff here. Warrior, the most significant card coming back probably is the one that's already in the game. I mean, Bouncing Blade, this is an interesting card. I look forward to Bouncing Blade being back, actually. But, um, yeah, otherwise not too much. And again, with the neutral set, um, some playable drops, but Hobgoblin coming back. But otherwise, I don't think there's really too much here. Neutrals, especially at this time, were just really understated. Pilot of Treader coming back is interesting. This card probably won't feel nearly as good as it used to. It's still be going to be pickable, but... Not too nuts. And Fell Reaver coming back. That'll be interesting. 5 mana 8 8 that you can actually pick. Um, but otherwise, yeah, Dr. Boom coming back. Going to have yet another sticky 6 drop. We don't have enough already between Sky Stalker and Scribe. Well, Scribe's leaving, so it's being replaced by Sky Golem, so fair enough, right? Uh, otherwise, yeah, that's. So that's it for the cards coming in. So with that, just let me know, like, so what do you think about this set? Do you like this rotation? Personally, I, th I think this would be a fine rotation. They're rotating out the older sets, which are less common appearance rate just because they're less power corrupt, so they're not as uh, they're not as picked. So the meta shakeup, the, there will be a meta shakeup, but it's not going to be super, super significant. There will be a slight increase in cards because of the mini set coming in. So there will be slightly more cards, which will dilute everything a little bit. But generally, this won't be a giant, giant meta shakeup. The most common cards will still be the most common cards. One of the most significant things to point out, though, is because Rise of Shadows is leaving, we won't have so many lackeys anymore, or maybe even any lackeys, probably something. But that will mean that certain things like Dragon Discoverers, you know, discovering Ysera will be significantly less common. So that is something that I definitely will be looking forward to. But um, so overall, I'll, I'm, I think this is going to be a decent rotation. I'm personally at the point though where I Ashes of Outlands has been in the game for so long at this point. I think it's been in for at this point over a year. So I'm I'm kind of looking forward to the point where Ashes of Outlands gets removed. I think it's been 14 months, right? But um just burrowing scorpion and stuff has still been a little bit too common for too long, I think. But you know, overall it's not the biggest deal. I think this will be a good rotation. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And with that, I want to bring up one more conversation, which is another tweet which was made by another one of the devs, which is Ixar. He was talking about the matchmaking I thought was an interesting topic of discussion. So this was something that people really didn't know much about for really the longest time. People kind of assumed that, you know, you were probably matched based off number of wins and if they couldn't find wins and losses, if they couldn't find someone at your exact win loss, you would get like matched based off of wins. And 
you know, so you, you're like seven zero, you're like seven and one. They try to find someone seven zero seven two. If they can't find someone at seven, they match you like maybe like someone at like six and one, eight and one. What we have found out here is that that's not exactly how Blizzard actually does it. So apparently what Xara said here is that they have, they basically assign numerical scores based off of your win-loss total. And those scores are being matched directly against each other, which has an implication here. I'm, he has a couple scores here. I'm not sure these are even real, but but I have in a spreadsheet here. Again, these are not like real numbers. Don't like assume these are real numbers, but like just this is just kind of like my depiction of like what I think it might look like. So these are the basically numerical scores. You can see you go up from zero wins here to 11 wins here and zero losses to two losses. And this would it would look something like this. So the significant thing here is you would have assumed before, right? If you're at like six and if you're at like six and one, right? You're, you're assuming you're gonna get someone close to six wins. That's generally what people would think. It's like, well, just based off these numbers again, which might not be accurate, you you're just as likely maybe to get someone at three and zero, or you might get someone at eight and two, right? You're not necessarily gonna get someone at six wins. That might just not be how it is. And this question was brought up specifically by another streamer who was talking about like, you know, games where he had experienced, you know, people being like at what he considered to be significantly differing results, you know, like eight and two versus eight zero, four two versus three zero, zero zero versus one and two, you know, pretty significant differences there. And so myself, I've also noticed just something, just some really things that feel kind of weird with the matchmaking lately. It seems like Especially right now, again, I don't know how these scores actually look in their algorithm, but like I've noticed significant increase in opponent quality right around like six to eight wins. And I've noticed a lot of really hard opponents at like zero, one, and two wins. So I'm kind of concerned about maybe things aren't working quite how they're designed, but I don't know. I'm just curious. Again, leave in the comment section below what you think, if you've noticed weird things as well. Because maybe, maybe, you know, they might have been, they might have set this up years ago and maybe the data was different then. Maybe, you know, match, matchmaking at different win losses was different back when buckets were around or just when cards were different than they are now. So maybe the recent metas has kind of thrown off their data. So maybe they just need to redo it. I'm not sure. Let me know what you guys think. But yeah, of course, anyway, very interesting insight to actually get this kind of communication with the devs. Of course, we got to appreciate that. Get us, this is something something that we haven't known for years and years, right? So getting in all, any of this kind of new information is pretty cool, right? So, so totally appreciate them, you know, giving this kind of communication and hope that there can be a more, you know, constructive and two-way dialogue in the future. And of course, that's how we know that there's going to be this new rotation as well. So a little bit ahead of time before, <laughs> or we may even know what most of the cards will be. But yeah, that's that, that's gonna be great. And yeah, I'm looking forward to the rotation. I will probably do a set. I'm expecting the the card review will reveal will probably be they'll probably dump them all tomorrow, and then hopefully I'll be able to get a a video out talking about the new cards um, before I go on vacation because I'm gonna be on vacation for this coming weekend. But I'll try to queue up some YouTube videos for you guys. But yeah, if you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Appreciate all your support. Thanks a lot for everyone. We'll see you guys next time.